Hi, I'm AJ Wilcox. I'm the founder of B2Links.com, and we are the ad agency that specializes only in LinkedIn ads. Here are the five biggest mistakes that SaaS companies make with their LinkedIn ads. Number one is using auto bidding. So LinkedIn's default when you create a new campaign, it starts every campaign off with a setting called maximum delivery or what used to be called auto bidding. And what you should know about this, it is the most expensive way to pay for your traffic about 90% of the time. Uh, this option is really only in your favor if your click-through rates are about three times higher than the average. So you can imagine how often it makes sense to use it. Number two is using audience expansion. LinkedIn also defaults to checking a little checkbox in every campaign called enable audience expansion. Now, it's really important to understand what this audience expansion is. It is the COVID-19 of LinkedIn ads. We are paying a premium to advertise on the LinkedIn ads channel and allowing LinkedIn to just stick whoever they want into our audience targeting, especially those who don't fit your exact criteria. This is a recipe for sales complaining about low quality leads later on. Always uncheck that box. Number three, bidding with LinkedIn's recommendations. Uh, it's silly that the platform itself gives recommendations that are not in your favor because I'm not really familiar with any ad platform that does this besides LinkedIn. But when you decide to bid manually, LinkedIn is going to suggest a really crazy set of recommendations. They might tell you that other of your competitors are bidding in the $20 to $40 per click range. Don't pay attention at all to this. Trust me, the only people who are paying that much are the Fortune 500 who have to bid that high just to spend their budget or people who don't know what they're doing and they're just taking LinkedIn's recommendations blind. Instead, bid by cost per click and bid significantly below the recommended range. And what you can do is, of course, you can always increase your bids later. You can always come back and increase your bids little by little if you're happy with the performance, but you need some more volume. Number four, targeting too broadly. If you listen to your LinkedIn reps, they'll suggest that all of your audiences are at least 300,000 people or more. But that's really just because they only care if you spend the entirety of your budget. They just want all of your dollars. So instead, don't be afraid to target only those who would make ideal customers for you. You can always broaden your audiences later, but in those initial stages of testing and trying to make sure LinkedIn ads is going to be a profitable channel for you, we've found that this is the most important thing you can do to get your sales team loving your leads and calling them high quality. And number five, pushing right to a demo or a trial. Of course, you know that your SaaS software is super valuable, and if people would just try it out or see it in action, they would immediately sign on the dotted line. Well, the fact of the matter is, software free trials are asking way too much of a cold audience. You're asking them to invest their time into a new product with a potentially steep learning curve when their plates are likely already full as it is. Same thing with a demo. A cold audience won't be willing to talk to someone unless they already know, like, or trust the company. So if this is the first time they've heard of you, they're probably going to want to do more research before getting on the phone with anyone. Instead of these higher friction types of offers, your call to action should be something that number one, solves a pain point for them, and number two, helps them to get to know you, like you, and trust you. We work with a lot of SaaS customers, and because of that, we have found a lot of opportunities specifically for SaaS companies. I wanted to share some of those with you. So without further ado, here are the five biggest opportunities that we see for SaaS companies when taking advantage of LinkedIn ads. So number one is being able to target the pain feelers and the decision makers. Most of us think to target those who feel the pain that our SaaS software solves, and that's a great thing to do. They absolutely are going to respond. But with most larger purchase decisions, there are going to be multiple decision makers involved in that buying committee. And there is significant opportunity in also targeting the members of that committee. The power in LinkedIn's targeting is that we can actually break these groups up into different campaigns and we can actually measure their impact and the performance separately without lumping them all together. Number two is we can target current users of your SaaS tool. We know how important it is when we work with SaaS companies to improve churn. It's one of the most challenging metrics that we're always having to face. And that's a great opportunity to target 
your current customers with ads. You can show them the advancements and the future of the products that they're using, and it's a very inexpensive way to get them excited about the future of the product so that when it comes time to re-up their subscription, they're that much more likely to sign on the dotted line. Number three, excluding current and past customers as well as competitors from your ad. When you're advertising on any other channel, unfortunately, it's just a given that your competitors will see and they will click on your ads, they'll get insight into what you're doing and it will cost you money. And your current and past customers will likely click too because they know, like, and trust you already. So while a campaign specifically targeting any of these segments might make sense, it would sure be nice if you could exclude your competitors as well as those contacts you've already paid to acquire from seeing your ads in general. And luckily with LinkedIn ads, this is totally possible. We love rolling this out for our clients. Number four is targeting your past customers for a win back. How many of your past customers left because some sleazy sales rep promised them that the grass was definitely gonna be greener on their side just to find out that the sales rep had definitely overpromised and undelivered. And because of that, there's a big opportunity of bringing back those past customers with messages that will make it easy for them to come back to what it is they've been missing. And finally, number five, being able to spy on your competitors. By checking out the ads tab on your competitors' company pages on LinkedIn, you'll be able to see their last six months of ads that they've been running, at least sponsored content ads. But make sure to keep in mind, though, that they're testing just like you are. So don't be in a hurry to copy any tactics you see them do. They may or may not be successful. That being said, it's never a bad thing to be educated about what your competitors are doing, what they're offering, just in case you can improve your offer. Reach out to us here at b2linked.com if you would like help managing your LinkedIn ads and improving their performance. Like I said, it's the one thing we do and we do it well. Again, I'm AJ Wilcox. I founded b2linked.com. We are the LinkedIn ads experts and I'm cheering you on in your LinkedIn ads initiative.